Everybody has a story about the first time they saw a long arm machine. And I have people ask me all the time, how did you get involved with long arm quilting? So I'm going to tell you. Um, this was in 1993, and you have to understand that I am from Idaho, okay? Originally from Idaho, and Idaho isn't really populated. And so we don't have like, um, even on the highways, there are not that many cars. <laughs> and they don't have really like rush hour or anything. Okay, so knowing where I'm from, kind of a rural setting, and moving to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, okay, I, I'm like um, just taken back with all the traffic and just kind of overwhelmed with all the things that are available. So I have an, a new house now, and I am making window coverings. I love window coverings. I love doing window coverings and all of the new designs and new fun things you can do. So I'm doing those for my house, and I have people that just drive by, and they like um, see me out in the yard or whatever, and they're like, do you do window coverings? Your house is so cute. And I'm like, Yes, I guess I do. And so all of a sudden I have a business doing window coverings. Honestly, that's how it happened. And so I'm doing this for my neighbors. And so I even, I even, you know, ordered um, the big books of the different um, kinds of drapery fabrics. And um, I had Waverly and Kirsch. And so I'm working with, with those companies. And so now I'm taking, you know, I didn't even advertise. I'm taking these little things around to people's home and measuring and doing their draperies. But you know what? Every time I did their bedroom, you know what they wanted. They wanted a comforter or bedspread to match their draperies. So now I'm like, okay, so now I need to make these. And of course, I was, I really needed to make money. And so whatever they said, I would say, yes, I do that. And so now I'm learning to do that on my own. And I would, I would take that backing fabric for the comforter and I'd tape it down to my kitchen floor and then they'd want fluffy. So I went to Walmart and I would get, you know, the big thick, uh, batting and I'd put two layers on that and then I'd lay the top on and I'd safety pin it and then I go to my machine I set up card tables in my living room I had you know here's my little sewing machine which by the way I wore out and I have it up there and I'm running this through quilting well a girl called me and said another customer said um, I heard you did wonderful comforters you must have a quilting machine and I'm like a what? A what? I was like, a quilting machine? I have a machine that I quilt with. She goes, no, a quilting machine. I saw them at the state fair last year. They're great big machines and you quilt with them. And I'm like, I could not imagine what this looked like. I was, my mind was going a million miles an hour trying to imagine what a quilting machine looked like and how it was different from my machine. And so, um, Anyway, I'm like, when's the state fair? So she told me when it was. Well, it was during the time when Rick was fishing with his brother in Wyoming, which is where I now live, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm like, I'm going to the state fair. Do you know what an ordeal it was for me to find my way to the state fair? Through all the traffic, to a place I had never been, and there were thousands of people at the state fair more people than I had ever been to and you know I mean I've never been to an event with that many people and this great big this is a Texas state fair thousands of people there and it's the biggest state fair in the world and that's the truth this big cowboy is right out in front going howdy partner and welcoming everybody I mean big cowboy I mean he's like 50 feet tall Anyway, I kept asking people, do you know where the quilting machines are? <laughs> and that was really hilarious because they just looked at me like, I don't know where you came from. We don't know. Finally, this lady said, 
they're in that building over there. That's where the arts are and that's where all the machines are. And so I found my way there and I saw this quilting machine and I knew exactly what it was when I saw it. And I promise you, I was frozen in my tracks. I felt like I had been struck by lightning just looking at this machine. Do you remember how you felt when you first saw it? It was like it took your breath away. You couldn't breathe. You're like, oh, wow. It was amazing. And I do have to tell you, on the way to the State Fair, trying to follow my map, I was in my little red Subaru. And you need a four-wheel drive in Idaho, but you don't need it in Texas. And it was an old car. And, um, but all the way there, I kept repeating to myself, because I had to talk to myself on the way so I'd get there safely, you know. I don't care if it's $1,000. I am going to have that quilling machine. If it's as much as $1,000, it doesn't matter. I'm, sp I'm going to spend it. I don't know where I'll get the money, but I'm going to have it. Some of you can really relate to that, I bet. So I'm standing there looking at the machine, and this nice man comes over, who I later found out was Ken Gamble. And he said, do you want to try the machine? And I'm like, oh, no. I know. I don't need to try it. Just bring it to my house, and I'll figure it out. He's like, okay, so you want to buy it? And I said, how much is it? And he said, $69.95. And I said, you're talking thousands, right? You're talking $6,995. And I, that doesn't sound like a lot now because they've raised a lot. But I just couldn't believe how much it was. But you know what? I had to have that machine. And, and even though I was shaking, I wrote a check out to Mr. Gamel for that amount. I've never written a check I didn't have money for. But he promised he wouldn't, cha he wouldn't cash it for three weeks because his Texas State Fair is 28 days long. <laughs> so... He was going to bring me that machine when it was finished, and I was so excited. So then I had to go home, find my way home, and all the way home I'm like, wow, I wrote a check for money I didn't have, and a, a lot of money, and now I'm so I'm thinking, where am I going to get the money? So first of all, I had to tell my husband what I had bought. Okay, so I wrote down on paper, he says this and I say this, <laughs> and he says, if he says this, then I'll say this, and if he says, so I had the whole script and I was sitting in the middle of my bed when I made that call, worrying about what he was going to say, but bless his heart, to his credit, he said, okay, where are you going to put it and how are you going to pay for it? So, of course, it had to go in the living room, dining room. We had to move all the furniture out. I knew that already. Who cares about the furniture, right, when there's a machine involved there? And I knew, you know, somehow I could pay for that machine. So I said, don't worry about it. I'll figure this out. So here's how I figured it out. I t made an inventory of all my relatives, okay, that maybe could ma loan me some money. And the first one was my sister, who's quite a bit older than me, my oldest sister. And so I called her and I told her about this great machine I was going to get and I had no doubt I could pay for it and I was going to have a fabulous business. And um, could she loan me some money? And she said, I'll think about it and I'll get back to you. And so you know what that meant. And I knew what that meant. So then I went to the next person on the list, okay? which was my next sister. Now, this sister had just been through a terrible divorce, and really, I didn't think she had any money anyway, but I just wanted to, hey, give her the opportunity to help me. And so I asked her about it and told her about it, and I'm sorry. <laughs> she, she said... I have $3,000 in the bank, and you can have every penny. Because I believe in you, and I know you're going to do this. So I had one person there that believed in me. 
and that's what I needed. So then I knew I had to go to the bank. Now I, again, you know, just was kind of naive about a lot of things, okay? So I went to the credit union, and luckily the lady there, w the bank manager was a lady, and she was pretty related to me, you know? She was really trying to work with me, and she said, do you have any collateral? And I swear I didn't know what collateral was. And I said, I might. I don't know. What is collateral? So she said, it's something you have, you know, that in case you can't pay for the machine, then the bank would take that or, you know. I go, yeah, I have a car. I have a car. And it's right out there in front. You know, you can come and look at it. So we walked outside. And, you know, there were some nice cars out there. And then there's this little red Subaru that's pretty old and station wagon and I said there's my car and she said is that all you have and I said then I thought she's not going to give me this loan I said yeah that's all I have and then she said you know what I'm just going to take this chance because I believe in you I think you can do this so now I've got two people who believe in me and I just was so excited. $219 a month. I knew I could make that. Well, you know what? To make, a, to make a, a long story short, I just got my cards out to all the decorators I could. Because remember, I was doing bedspreads and, bed, and comforters. And I had, I, when I'd go to their shop, they'd go, you know what? We're sending these things off to Louisiana. And so here you are right here. We'd be happy to get, send you this business. And I paid for my machine in six months because I put everything I earned toward that machine. And until the first quilt came in, um, you know, the quilt shop there in McKinney found out that I did, that I had a quilting machine. I don't know how they found out, but word gets around, you know? And um, this lady called and said, I have a quilt. Do you quilt? Do you do quilts? Uh, yeah, I do quilts. Um, <laughs> so she brought it over to my house and she said, you know, um, I'm just so excited, you know, to find you to do my to do my quilts. And I said, "That's great. Here's my six patterns uh, that came with the machine." And she goes, "Those are lovely, but what I was thinking is if you could put a design in this area, and then I've seen where they do lines down through this area. Now you probably know what that is. It's an Irish chain. That was an Irish chain. I didn't even know the name of it, but I said, "Oh yes, I can do that." You know what? I had never changed the speed on my machine because I figured when Mr. Gamble brought it, he must have set it at the right speed. It was set on 75 or 80. I don't know. That's what I sewed everything at. I had never touched the tensions on my machine because I figured he must have set it right. I was afraid of that machine and I had never been in the front of the machine. I wasn't sure what those buttons were for because I worked on the back of the machine with my six patterns. Well, now I had to go to the front, and I did freehand. <laughs> I did those diagonal lines freehand, and I figured out how to set a pattern in, and that opened up my entire world to custom quilting. Because from then on, it was inventing ways to do things better and how to set things to, and, and, and completely the front of the machine. Wow, a whole other aspect to this whole quilting idea. And the quilts just kept coming in, and it just, it just went from there. Then I got a shop, then I moved inside a shop. I just, I just know that this business um, is, is like the answer to so many people's dreams. I know that it was the answer to my dreams because I used to just pray that I could find something that I could do with the talents that I had been given, that I could be happy doing. That was while I was driving to work every day, um, you know, to an office job and then back home through rush hour. And it was not fun. And I know that I was blessed to be able to find this business. And I just want to end this little segment with telling you this. If you need somebody to tell you that they believe in you, then read my lips. I believe in you. You can do it if I can do it.